this video, we're going to look at using the like operator to match certain patterns in Excel VBA. So you can see here, I have a small data set of inventory items. And what we want to do is loop through this list and use the like operator to match certain patterns to determine what inventory warehouse we want to ship to based on the values here. So for example, I have some inventory items that begin with the letter L followed by either text character or a numeric character and then the letter T. So I want to match that pattern. So L followed by any character, then the letter T. So the first thing we want to do is get into the VBA editor window. You can do that by hitting Alt F11 on your keyboard or going to the developer ribbon and clicking this visual basic button. Anywhere in this project window, I'm going to right click, go to insert, and then module. So to save time and not make this video so long, I've already created the code and I'm just going to drop it in here. So we have a subroutine called pattern match. We have our variables declared here. So we have a WB for our workbook variable. We have WS for our worksheet variable. We have a variable called last row. So we set our workbook equal to this workbook, the one we're in now. We set our worksheet variable equal to our workbook variable and then worksheets and the name of the sheet we're on now is called records. We have a last row variable that will dynamically get us the last row, no matter where that may be. So we can add new records and it's still going to get the last row. So that is equal to our worksheet variable and then cells. And then for our row input, we have rows and then count. So that counts every single row on our spreadsheet all the way down to the very bottom. And we know we're always going to have values in column A. So that's column one for our column input. So from there, what we want to do is end Excel up because that's like hitting control up arrow from the bottom of our sheet. And then that's going to take us to whatever the last row in column A that has values in it. And we want to get that row number. So then we have a counter variable called X that's going to be as the data type long. And that just represents each row as we go through our for loop, which is the next line. So we begin with the keyword for, and then we reference our counter variable, and we define a beginning point and an ending point that we want this loop to begin and end at. So we want it to begin on row two, we want it to go to up until our last row variable. So while this loop is running, we're going to create a string variable called str it's as the data type string, and it is equal to our worksheet and then cells and our counter variable for the row input and column one or column a for a column input. So this just gets the value of whatever row we're on while our loop is running and stores it in this string variable. So then we have a series of if statements and I might just add a little space here so you can kind of see what's going on. So our first if statement, we test to see if the string and then using the keyword like in double quotes, we have our first pattern. So we have some inventory values that either begin with H or J followed by numbers. And you can see some of the J's are lowercase and some are uppercase. So what we have here is a set of brackets. So what we're saying is match any character in these brackets. So we have uppercase range H to J alphabetically or lowercase H to J followed by match any number. So 
it begins with this pattern here and then we have a star which represents one or more characters so that's just saying anything can come after this pattern so that if that pattern is matched then in column C so we have our worksheet cells whatever row we're on column 3 column C we want to assign that to warehouse a then we have our next if condition so we have keywords else if again our string variable if it is like this pattern so we have some values that begin with the letter L and then we have a question mark because the question mark stands for any single character so that can be text or number so we have L any character followed by T and then anything after represented by the star so that will pick up all three of these and assign that to warehouse B so then we have our next if condition if our string variable is like and we begin with a star because we have some values here that contain the letter uppercase C followed by an upper or lowercase a so that would match any one of these values here as well as the ones that begin with a number dash and then C because we have a star in front of that so anything can come before and then anything can come after that pattern if that is the case we want to assign those to warehouse C then we have another test we want to see if the string is like we have anything preceding a dash and then the number symbol so we have what this number symbol represents by itself is any single digit so what we're saying here is somewhere in the value we have a dash followed by six digits six numbers and then another dash and anything after so that's gonna pick up this value here so we have a dash here followed by six digits and then another dash so if that is that condition is true we want to assign that to warehouse D anything else that does not meet any of these first four tests we want to assign to warehouse E and then we have our end if statement you have to end your if statement and then we have the keyword next and our counter variable because during the first iteration of this loop this will perform all these tests on row 2 because that's the beginning point of our loop and once that is done it's gonna go to the next sequence which is 3 and repeat these steps all the way down so we get to our last row and then at that point the loop will shut off when it is finished with that last row so I'm gonna go ahead and run this and what we should see is based on these patterns we get the appropriate warehouse number letter assignment so I'll hit play you can see everything that matched this pattern gets warehouse a anything that contained began with the letter l uppercase any character and then the uppercase t followed by anything after got warehouse b so you can see all these values here you got warehouse b anything that began or I'm sorry not began contained uppercase C followed by either upper or lowercase a got warehouse C this one value here that had a dash followed by six digits and then another dash got warehouse D and then anything else got warehouse E well that is all for now thanks for watching